Hello, hello, hello. So today we are talking about Miss Gladys Knight, the Empress of Soul. So she has a long running career since forever. <laughs> uh, maybe the 1950s, 1960s, she goes back. She has given us hits like Neither One of Us, I heard it through the grapevine, and of course, the infamous Midnight Train to Georgia. She also showcased her acting talents in shows like the J. Boo Fox show, Jag, and Star. She has won seven Grammys, four as a solo artist, and three with the Pips. She received a Kennedy Center's Honors in 2022. In 2007, she received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and she also is an inductee in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But today we are talking about her personal life. Hello, my name is Tamika, and whether you stumbled upon Junkie for a Story or are here by intention, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please give it a like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell to turn on notifications. That way you won't miss out whenever I release new videos. There will be a link in the description for the autobiography I reference in this episode, Gladys Knight Between Each Line of Pain and Glory from 1997. If you want more info about the book, you know what to do. And now on to the video. So I must say Gladys Knight is not as forthcoming with the juicy details about her personal life. Now, this again is from 1997. So at this point she had been married three times. She has since remarried her fourth husband and is still married to Mr. William McDowell. And they have been married for over 20 years. So she did get it right with the fourth marriage it looks like. Maybe because they don't have kids together. I don't know. <laughs> but she is still with him. However, her previous marriages were not the best. But I will say she did walk away at a time when she wasn't hating her ex-lovers. And maybe that's why she is a little more gentle with the way she talks about those previous marriages. With the exception of her third marriage to... Les Brown. Like I stated, she, in this book, had been married three times. So the first marriage was to her, well, he wasn't her high school sweetheart. She was in high school when she met him, but he had already graduated. So I am referring to Mr. William Jimmy Newsom. He went by Jimmy. And she met him, I believe she said he was three years older than her. At this point, she had already been performing with her family as Gladys Knight and the Pips. And that the Pips came from their manager, his last name. Actually, it wasn't his last name. Their manager was their cousin, James Woods, but his nickname was Pip. So they had been performing, but not really making money off of it. It wasn't a career yet, but they were pursuing it, obviously. And she met James Newman, who she had two babies with. But then she found out in the hard way that Jimmy had a drug problem. It affected their relationship and his ability to be a provider for his family. So she eventually walked away. At that point, she was a stay-at-home mom for a brief period of time. But because of his substance abuse problems and other issues, she went back on the road to make money for her family. And then she eventually called it quits with Jimmy, but hadn't officially divorced him. Then she meets Mr. Barry Hankerson. And this is the person who I know as Aaliyah's uncle. 
I mean, that's what they were always saying back when Aaliyah first came out. And they also were, you know, on the radio and in the press, constantly linking Aaliyah to Gladys Knight like she was Gladys Knight's niece or something, some type of relative. But I guess that's through through the marriage. Although they weren't married at the time when Aaliyah came out. So, I mean, I guess they were using Gladys Knight's celebrity to draw attention to Aaliyah to get her career up and running. But in her autobiography, I get the impression that Gladys Knight did not know Aaliyah. <laughs> anyway, so she meets Barry Hankerson and she is attracted to him and they form a friendship that turns into romance. And then the two become engaged. Now she's still married to William Newman. So she approaches him to ask for a divorce so she can marry Barry. And because they were on good terms, you know, he had no problem with it. So he went on and gave her a divorce, but he did warn her he didn't agree with her jumping into another marriage right away. But, you know, she already had her mindset on getting married. So that's what she did. <laughs> now, she did have a son and daughter with her first husband, James Newman. The son was junior and she had a daughter named Kenya. And then when she married Barry, she had her second son, her son with Barry, his name is Shanga Ali Hankerson. Now I want to make a correction here. Okay, so the her first husband, his name is James Jimmy Newman, but he went by Jimmy. And then their son together, his name is James Jimmy Gaston Newman the third. All right, so what I did find interesting is that Newman Sr. passed away at the age of 35. He died in his sleep. But again, he was a drug addict. And so he, he passed away at the age of 35 is what she said, Gladys Knight. But then her son with Newson passed away at the age of 36. So yeah, that's, that's sad, but it, it just, I don't know. It seemed like a airy fact about those two men who were quite special to her in her life. But anyway, back to Barry. So she's married to Barry Hankerson and things are not going so well in the marriage yet again. So she's, you know, ready to part ways with Barry, but then she finds herself pregnant. So she gives the marriage another try. She tries to resolve things with Barry and work it out for the sake of the child. And this is the same son who was kidnapped and Gladys Knight ended up paying over a million dollars to find and get him back and return him home. That is what has been reported. But anyway, at some point that relationship fails as well. She moves on from Hankerson and then she meets Les Brown, who <laughs> it sounds like when she wrote this book, they were the split between her and her third husband was rather new. But <laughs> you do get the sense that Miss Knight felt swindled by Les Brown. She made a comment about how he really pursued her aggressively until she finally gave in and agreed to go out with him. And she even said he was the first man to propose to her. She said, I had been married twice, but neither Jimmy nor Barry proposed to me, nor had they given me an engagement ring. Les Brown was the first man to do that for me, and it made me cry. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but it turns out, according to Gladys Knight, Les Brown was... Maybe he slightly misrepresented himself because he was somewhat of a motivational speaker or something along those lines. And it seems like he 
went after Gladys Knight because he wanted to grow his name and become more of a notable speaker in that sector. And he saw his way in through Miss Knight. And she talked about how he would try to force her to speak to the public whenever he would have these engagements where he would speak, he would try to bring her on stage as well, because I don't know, I get the impression she was part of <laughs> the contract, whatever he would sign on to be a speaker. Maybe he was mentioning her as, you know, a special guest because it, it seems a little forceful the way he was trying to get her on stage, but you know, who knows? Either way, she doesn't look back fondly on that third marriage. But I say all of this to say, I came across an article that says that she signed a contract, is reported to be developing a series about her life and career, which she will executive produce through her Empress of Soul Productions banner. And it's said to be similar to The Crown taken on different periods of her life. Now, I would love to see something about her life. And I think it's great that she gets to do this in her lifetime because, you know, usually this gets done when the person passes away. <laughs> so I am glad to hear that she not only is telling her life story through a TV series, but she also is executive producing it. So she will be directly involved in the production of this series. But I must say, reading her autobiography, <laughs> I was a little bit perplexed because it's just not that interesting, but maybe someone else telling the story will bring out the compelling parts of her life that will allure viewers in. I don't know. Because her autobiography, I don't know if it was part of some kind of settlement or something, because she did say around the end of the book that she got involved in gambling and she was extremely addicted to gambling when she moved out to Las Vegas. And she even had to go to Gamblers Anonymous to stop the gambling, or at least gain some control of it. <laughs> so I don't know if this was some part of some kind of settlement and she was forced to, to do this autobiography, but it, it kind of reads like when you get invited to a birthday party or something, like that and you forgot to buy a gift. And so then you just, you look around your house for something plausible <laughs> that you can give to the person, some kind of scraps that you don't mind parting with that would be appropriate for the birthday person based on the relationship you have with them. Like that's how this, book reads like she just she gathered the scraps about her life that she didn't mind sharing with folks and that's what she put in the book and she left all the other stuff out <laughs> the stuff that she knew we would really be interested in yeah that's not in the book so i'm curious to know what the series would be like i mean i hope it's interesting but i'm my hopes are not up that high i must say <laughs> But either way, we might be seeing the life story of Gladys Knight on TV someday. <laughs> I mean, there is a writer's strike and some other strike. I, I don't know what's going on. So who, who knows when this will come to the small screen or the big screen, whichever screen. But she signed a deal, so we... We shall see how this plays out. Well, that does it for me. 
thank you again for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you choose. You can find a link in the description for her autobiography. Again, it's titled Between Each Line of Pain and Glory by Gladys Knight. There's no word yet on who will play Gladys Knight or I didn't see anything. So again, with the strikes that are going on, I guess, you know, that put a halt on a lot of things happening in Hollywood. So I look forward to hearing it. I mean, we know Kelly Rowland did play Gladys Knight at one time and she would be a good name in the running, you know, for maybe Fantasia, I think, would be a good choice as well. But, you know, well, who knows? There's no word yet on any casting news. But who do you think should play Gladys Knight? Let me know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you again for watching and listening. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.